Hi, and welcome back to Just Paint It. I'm Christina Watts, a multimedia artist in Prince George, BC, and today we're gonna rock out and paint this. First part of painting some of the still lifes is to cheat, and today we're cheating. So I've got my actual big canvas that happens to be the size of this guitar, which is great for this piece. And um, there's a number of ways you can transfer an image onto canvas. This is my cheating way, and that is just to put the subject right down on the canvas and trace it out. There are some design elements to this. So you could have put the guitar directly up and down, but putting something on an angle is more exciting because a diagonal is more exciting and guitars are exciting, so why wouldn't you want to make it a little bit more interesting? Um, you could put it center fold, but, uh, meaning directly up and down, but uh, that would give it like a stately, sort of um, unplayed look. Now that the image of the fender is put onto the canvas in graphite, I'm going to start to immortalize this Telecaster that was uh, started off made in the 1950s in this classical art piece. Um, some people who've done graphite on canvases choose to spray it with a workable fixative so that the graphite doesn't smudge on the canvas and dirty their paint or um, get in the way. But I haven't put a lot on here, so I'm just going to proceed. Today we're using Payne's Gray and we have a cad red and a burnt orange down here, um, which is really essentially, we're gonna have three main colors, red, black, and your white. So let's go, we're gonna outline this and start with that. Now I'm not too worried about getting this just perfect, I just wanna have a base point for my sponge work. So even if my lines aren't straight, that's okay. We can fix it later. Anything you don't like with your painting can be painted over top. And don't forget to rotate your canvas as you're working, um, just to give yourself the best angle that you can give yourself with your brush strokes. So I always wet my sponge beforehand and I pinch the excess water out because you don't want it dripping for this technique, but uh, you can use drippy sponges if you wanna get some nice drip work. And I'm gonna start to put in more of this darker red and some of the Payne's Gray into the background just for variation. We've put in a really nice, and because I moved around with a canvas and um, I used different swirl motions and I really went fast sponging so that it doesn't have time to, to dry and sort of pick up your brush strokes with a sponge as you go, it gives it this kind of a really interesting background. And again, variating the colors was important. I kept in mind that this guitar is black and so I put a lot of the really bright red close to where the white or the black was gonna hit it just for contrast in this piece and sort of vignetted with the black around here. And now I'm going to move into um, some more brushwork and some palette knives. So let me reload and we'll start on that. Okay, moving into the guitar. Now the Fender Telecaster from the 50s is a real classic guitar and it is one of the most versatile and well sought after guitars. So we really want to give it some justice here and we're going to use some brushing in. We're going to brush in the, the neck and then we're going to get into the body down here and move into the white um, piece on the guitar as you can see over here. And after that we're going to use some knife work to make it more exciting. So let's get going. On my brush is a mixture of the white and the 
think it's like a burnt umber and a little bit of the red just because it's a neutral color on the neck, so I'm going with a neutral color for the body. And again, don't worry too much about this part because this is not the detail part. This is kind of like background. Every once in a while, I like to glance over at my subject matter just so that I can remember where the, some of the lines need to go. You'll notice here I've uh, messed up this part, but it's okay because you can still wipe it off. So the other thing with painting a guitar is this is looking really flat right now and that's what they, they end up looking like at first. Anything that you paint that's still life is going to look flat on your first few base rounds until you get to a point where you can kind of add a little bit more definition. Um, I kind of like to keep it more sort of uh, in Impressionist myself simply because your brain likes to think about uh, filling in the gaps. It's kind of a line So when I go to do things like the strings, I won't necessarily put in all of the strings I'll just put in um, an impression that they're there If you ever wonder why sometimes you get different people um, selecting different artwork for their homes. It's really interesting. So a lot of people will select artwork for their homes that sort of speaks to their lifestyle. Or, um, <clears throat> for example, if you even have people that feel that their, their lives are really chaotic, they tend to buy a lot of tranquil pieces. Um, it's important, I think, to surround yourself in any environment that you're in with beautiful things that sort of give you that freedom of expression or fill that kind of atmosphere for you with stuff that you enjoy because as we all know we can become a product of our environments so i think it's important to make your environment a really good one my brushes are starting to pick up some of this paint that hadn't quite dried that i'm sort of lifting off and it's going a little bit gray on me but that's okay it kind of is interesting i'm just going to shift size as i move here just so that my brush strokes follow suit. And if you didn't think painting wasn't a workout, think again. You're constantly on your feet and you're using your body in like really bizarre ways just to sort of get what you need out of the painting done. I'm not too worried about this bottom half right now because we're gonna be adding these components in there. So um, they're gonna be on top. I'm really more getting into sort of the form of it and making some adjustments as I go. So I'm looking, starting to look at the silver now. And I think what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'll hit this in white again, but this is good enough for now. But I'm gonna hit all the silver spots that are obscure up here with um, some black because the silver that I put on top of the black is going to be really silver and the black is going to essentially be a shadow then. So let's try that. I didn't even clean my brush going from white to black in here and that's totally okay because that'll make gray and that's good. Now this doesn't have to be perfect these parts because they just want to give the impression that that's what that's there. So there's one. These are my favorite, the stuff that, you know, looks like a thing, but it's just really some wiggly lines. And this is all gonna be, let's see. Now this was on an angle, so that needs to be kind of on an angle as well. Oh, that's a little high. We've got our 
knife ready and loaded with black and now we're going to go in we're going to put some little definition pieces into this which are going to really make it stand out a bit more. Now remember what I said about the eye likes to sort of get an impression of stuff that's on there and they like your, your brain likes to kind of figure in the puzzles. It kind of gives um, a piece more, more interest. So, that was too much there. Anytime you can give that to your painting, that works good. Now the only reason why I'm cleaning up this part so much is because I'm going to be putting some lines down over top. And I have a really neat tool for that because blades come in all kinds of shapes and sizes. And this one in particular is really good for city scenes and windows, but it can also run some lines in. So I'm going to add those, um, I think, in, we'll try the white and the black. And because these are fairly thick, I'm going to put it on an angle so that it captures some of them. I'm just going to move the canvas because this angle is kind of tough. So if you're going to run those in, that'll be easier maybe to run it this way. When you start working on a certain part of your piece uh, and you stay there too long, like I noticed that I'm spending too much time actually right now on these lines. So what I will do is I'll actually move on to another part of the piece and I'll go back to these lines. And the reason for that is simply because you could just end up working and working and working in one area. Meanwhile, your other areas sort of fall to pieces. So it's nice to sort of work around your canvas and come back and, and just keep making adjustments all the way through. So I'm going to actually put a few big black pieces in here, give this a couple more swipes, and I'm actually going to walk away from this part. And then do some more later. Okay, so I've gone in, I've done some more touch-ups. I may do some more touch-ups after it's sort of dry, just to kind of flush out some little areas here, like this red that's sort of blotch in here. Um, but ultimately, this is a finished piece. And the touch-ups that I did, sometimes I used a pencil and the end was filled with silver to do these fun little dots here. Now I'm gonna sign this painting. And And you have yourself an artful rockin' day.